would you like to have a conversation with Kevin? Then call 800-243-9719. And now, here's your host, Kevin Conover. Bring your time. Welcome to Educate for Life Radio Bring and Podcast. I'm your host, Kevin Conover, and uh, we're on K Praise 1210 AM here in San Diego. Uh, AM 1210 uh, San Diego. We're also on FM 106.1 in North County. Uh, if you want to listen to us live, we're on every Saturday. And uh, we're also streaming on social media. So we're on Facebook, we're on YouTube, we're on Periscope, we're on all these different avenues. And, uh, you know, typically my program is about uh, apologetics. And that comes from the Greek word apologia, defend, which means to defend in Greek, defend a biblical worldview. But today, um, we, we're still talking about a biblical worldview, but I often have people that are involved in politics on the program. And the reason I have that is because, you know, our Christianity, our faith in God and our faith in the Bible is integrated into all areas of our lives. So it's not just a church on Sundays, but it's also how we're voting, right? How we're um, influencing culture, how we're reaching out to the community around us, right? Our, our desire, Christ asks us to um, reach out to the widows and the orphans. That's what he says. Religion that God our Father finds as pure and faultless is this, reaching out to widows and orphans. And Christ said, whenever you visit somebody in prison, you visit me. Whenever you give somebody a cup of water, a cold water, you're, you're giving it to me. And so our faith in Christ calls us to reach out and be involved in our community. And a lot of that, I believe, uh, has to do with our involvement also in politics. What do people believe politically? How are they influencing the culture politically? How are the laws that are being passed honoring God, or are they not? Um, I'm a, most of you know I'm also a teacher. I teach at Christian High School out in El Cajon, Shadow Mountain, with Pastor David Jeremiah. And we're actually going through a unit right now that talks about integrating our faith into the culture, into government, into politics, uh, because that's a key foundation for our government, if you know anything about that. And so uh, we have to ask ourselves, in Psalm 33, 12, it says, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. And so today we're getting a jump on the elections that are going to be taking place, the big election year coming up here in 2020, November 2020. My guest today is Phil Ortiz, and he's actually running for El Cajon City Council down here in Southern California. And uh, we're going to talk with him a little bit about why he wanted to get involved in politics and uh, his own faith in God and uh, and his background and what he's concerned about. So, uh, Phil, thanks for being on the program today. Appreciate you having me. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, if you're interested in supporting Phil, if you like what you, you uh, hear today, you can check him out on Facebook, Elect Phil Ortiz, uh, facebook.com forward slash Elect Phil Ortiz. He'll also have a website up, electphilortiz.com very soon too. But Phil, hey, why don't we start off with um, your growing up and uh, how you ended up deciding that you wanted to get involved in politics. But why don't we start off with your faith in God and um, you know, when did you decide to become a Christian? Yeah, so I was raised Catholic. Okay. And so I always knew of God, but I didn't know God. I didn't know who he was. Sure. And uh, in college was actually when I came to faith. A good friend, one of my best friends, died when he was 24. And that was just a mouthpiece for God and all my pain. I mean, I was depressed, alcohol, drugs, everything. And God grabbed a hold of my life through the book Wild at Heart. And... Oh, saved I, me. I've read that book. Great book. Yeah, very good book. It really spoke to me. And then just started reading all these apologetic books, Case for Christ, uh, Blue Like Jazz. My mom was going to church, um, not at our Catholic church, at uh, Foothills. She invited me, got plugged into a home group, and never looked back. So Wow, yeah, that's amazing. Really 180 transformation. I was in a frat. I was in a fraternity. Yeah. And, uh, so yeah, where were you going to college at San Diego state locally? Okay. I was in the Phi Kappa Psi fraternity and, um, just knew I had to change my life. Yeah. There was no turning back from it. And you went to uh, high school locally also. Yeah. Went to Santana okay. uh, in Santee, California. Yeah. Uh, grew up born and raised. That's fantastic. So you've been very involved at your church at Foothills also. Can you tell us a little bit about Foothills? Yeah. So the first home group I started going to, uh, I was, being mentored by the home group pastor, and he grew me to become a home fellowship pastor that was in the college group ministry called Common Ground at Foothills Christian Church. And then uh, shortly after that, we kind of branched off to continue the age group into a young adult and then a uh, young family's home group, uh, young adults. And I recently just stepped down as home fellowship pastor maybe 10 months ago, the beginning of the year, because I had this vision and call on God to be involved in politics and run for run for office, 
And but my time as a home fellowship pastor was fantastic. Um, it, we it was my home. It was my community. It was yeah. my family. Yeah. And this, this, that's who I help. Who helped me go through life? It's who I helped go through life with um, accountability and. It was a brotherhood, and and I mean, I still go, yeah, just not in leadership. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's great. So um, let's talk about why you decided to get involved in politics. You said that you had a call on your life to do that, yeah. and you have a wife and and uh, kids, right? I have a two year old, uh, and I we just found out not too long ago we have one more on the way. Hey, congratulations! So the new ones in March, so so you're a busy man. And I run uh, my business full time. Okay, and what's your business? So uh, I'm a home energy rater. So we evaluate homes to see how energy efficient they are. Gotcha. So we'll do testing on homes. We'll work with contractors, air conditioning companies, and we try and save the homeowner some money. <laughs> so yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. Uh, what's the name of your business? Uh, New Earth Energy Specialist. New Earth Energy Specialist. Okay. So that's fantastic. So you're a businessman in El Cajon. You're familiar with you know what's going on in the community. Yeah. You've been in the community for a very long time. So that's fantastic mm -hmm. and uh when did you feel like you know what i want to be involved in politics is this something that you knew about like when you were in college or is this relatively new or what what's going on there that's a good that's a really good question it's, i was in the discovery phase for a long time so my family has a long military history of serving our country my father served my grandfather served my cousins my uncle my grandfather world war ii veteran prisoner of war fought the nazis wow interrogated beat up didn't give out any intel. I mean, he's a, he's an American hero. So this is the the uh, what is in front of me as far as service to our country. And so I thought that's where I wanted to go. Yeah. I, um, but I didn't know it at the time. But God had His hand on me throughout high school and throughout college. And anytime I got close to joining the military, something got in the way. Um, I didn't know it was God at the time, but I think He was protecting me and guiding me towards this path that I'm at now. My Degreeing, I didn't know I wanted to go in in college. My, I, I thought I was going to go uh, into the military as an officer um, and after I graduated, um, but th that didn't happen. My degree was in criminal justice administration, minoring in public administration. I thought I, maybe if I didn't go into the military, maybe I'd be a police officer. Yeah. Um, and then I ended up working at a college, Ashford University, and uh, got my master's in public administration. Um, so these kinds of degrees, not knowing that I want that God was calling me to go into politics later on in life are totally servicing me here as my role as a city council member and a planning commissioner. So, um, moving forward, um, I, I, I knew I wanted to serve my country. I knew that, um, I wanted to help my community and serve in some way. And God called, um, my wife and I to do it, um, I had been getting involved, helping out uh, local candidates here and there, um, kind of playing around with it. And finally, we were sitting in church one day, and God called, said, um, you need to get in the fight. And Rachel got a, the same word of the same service saying, Phil needs to start fighting for people's freedom. Wow. And she told me what that word was, and, and I told her what I heard, and we got prayer, and it was a violent shove into serious after that. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. After so, that, yeah. So um, I'm just curious. What was the message that the pastor was preaching that Sunday? It was that? completely unrelated. Oh, was <laughs> <laughs> you were like, yeah, great, great message, pastor. But yeah, um, here's what I heard. <laughs> it was, and I had just got done um, helping out with an event. It, it was an all church event, and the mayor was involved. Mayor Bill Wells. You said uh -huh. you've had him on. Yeah. And. Um, he had been encouraging me, you should run, Phil, you should run, you should, you should get more involved. And I was just slow playing him. I don't know what I was thinking. And, yeah. and then the following day, I went to church and, and uh, we got a very, very special. And that was the first word that the Lord had given us as a married couple. So. Now, how long ago was that? That was uh, three years ago. Okay. Three years ago. Now, uh, for those of you listening, uh, you know, Phil is actually on the El Cajon City Council, mm -hmm. but... He was not elected onto the city council. So when we come back, we're going to talk about how he ended up on the El Cajon City Council. It's a pretty cool story. And then we're going to talk about what's, hap what's coming up here and what's happening in politics currently in uh, East County specifically. But uh, this is all re relevant to, you know, the, the, on the federal perspective, on the national perspective, what we have going on. Um, because there is certainly a cultural war in our country right now. And if you don't know about it, you'd have to be hiding in a cave somewhere. There is a very strong pull in two different directions. There's this idea of democratic socialism, 
which I did a whole show on democratic socialism. And what, what is that exactly? Whoever heard of democratic socialism? And um, then we, we have what we typically think of as a democratic republic. And what does that mean? There's, there's a difference here. So stay with us. We're going to be right back. My guest today is Phil Ortiz, and he's running for El Cajon City Council. And I hope he wins. So um, I hope you'll vote for him. We'll be right back. Fast. Hi, this is Jason Hall, president of Team Home Loans, a branch of Synergy One Lending. I just want to take this opportunity to thank Kevin Conover for the profound impact he's had on mine and my wife's spiritual life, as well as being an incredible teacher while our kids were his students. His knowledge and passion have taught us all how important it is to be defenders of our faith. It is our sincere hope and prayer that you will continue to learn to be defenders of your faith through Kevin's radio show and through his Educate for Life teachings. Thank you, Kevin, from the Hall family and Team Home Loans. If you need to buy an affordable, reliable used car, truck, or even an enclosed trailer, call Conover Tires Wheels and Service in Oceanside. For tires and car repairs you can trust, call Dan Conover and his team at 760-439-1631. Honesty, integrity, and quality service. They're ASE, BBB, and NAPA certified. And they're proud supporters of Educate for Life. Learn more at ConoverTires.com. Check out their great reviews, 760-439-1631. How can you live in San Diego and miss out on enjoying the water? Fast Lane Kayaking sells popular Hobie Cat kayaks that you pedal, not paddle. That means your hands are left free for fishing and fun. They're light and they're easy to use and maintain. Just rinse them off. Try one free on a demo ride. For 36 years, Ron and Debbie Lane have served San Diego with fun, family-friendly water sports of all kinds. Learn more. FastLaneSailing.com. 619-222-0766. Hey, thanks for being with us today. Really appreciate you uh, hanging out. And my guest today is Phil Ortiz. He's running for El Cajon City Council. Phil, wave to the camera here. One of the cameras here. I think there's right? two. We've got, we've got all kinds of cameras over here. So, um, it, And uh, he's going to be running in November 2020. So we're, we're really he's really getting a head start here. And when was your kickoff campaign, Phil? It was a couple months ago. Had no parking at the event. Yeah. <laughs> and it was fantastic. So that's really cool. Really successful. Yeah, that's nice when you got a lot of support behind you and, mm-hmm. and you're heading in there. And you're way, way out in front of everybody else. Yeah, as far as I know, there's been no one that's officially declared to run for Elkhorn City Council in my district, my okay. specific district in Southern Elkhorn. Gotcha. So now, is it is it broken up into districts, or is it is it uh, the whole city? Yeah, that's a good question. So Elkhorn just went to districts. Yeah. Uh, in t- 2016, and that really divided um, the votership. Um, so I'm in a district right now that had that had no sitting city councilman. Okay. Um, that's one of the biggest reasons why I wanted to run is because I wouldn't be running against. Uh, an incumbent, yeah, which is a lot easier to win. Yeah, I'm sure you know. Yeah, um, it's a yep. lot easier if there's no incumbent. So, uh, I have a tactical advantage, I guess is that's what you'd call it. Sure. So, yeah. so now um, we were talking about last segment how you're on El Cajon City Council already, but you weren't elected. So, give our listeners uh, the background there. What happened? How did you end up on the council? Yeah. So um, about four months ago, there was a sitting city councilman that resigned his position as city councilman. Um, I won't mention his name, but he's all over the place. I'm yeah. sure if you just Google El Cajon City Council, you see a bunch of news articles about him. Yeah. Uh, but he resigned, and so the city council had to fill the seat within a certain amount of time legally. They could either uh, do a citywide election, which would have cost about $600,000, or they could appoint someone for the remainder of the term, which is about a year and a half. So they chose, they voted to appoint someone. Um, about 24 people applied from within the city of El Cajon, um, and the process was pretty intense. We submitted an application. The city council members reviewed our application, a uh, handful of questions. Then we had a t- in front of the city council and in front of the entire crowd at the city council meeting, we gave a two-minute presentation or speech on why we think we should be a vo- uh, p- appointed to the open seat. Then they narrowed it down to, I think, five people. Then right I- there? Right 
right in front of everybody. They, they narrowed, they it, narrowed down. it down right there. They were like, okay, everybody, this was like, you got voted off the island here, right? Yeah, that, that's exactly <laughs> what it was like. I mean, talk about palms sweaty and your yeah. heart beating fast. Yeah. Um, and so I made it to the top five. Then they brought us up again. And then each city councilman could ask us two questions. So it was like a, the biggest job interview of your life. Yeah. Live streamed in front of a huge crowd. Yeah, it was it was very one of the one of the probably the most intense thing I've ever done in my entire life. Yeah. Then they deliberated in front of everybody. Oh, I like this person, and I like oh, I like what he said here. And <laughs> so you're just sweating, and and I wanted I had to sit down and maintain composure. Did you have any sense when it was narrowed down to that five? Did you have any sense that hey, I have a good chance at this, or were you thinking like oh man, I'm not sure if I'm going to get it or not? I mean, honestly, there were some there's some pretty incredible people in Oklahoma. Yeah. I I I have to tip my hat to the majority of the people that were there. Excellent human beings. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. They're engaged in the community. They want to see good in El Cajon. Um, and so I, I felt lucky that I was selected, to be honest. Um, so after, obviously, I got, was top, part of the top five, yeah, I, I knew I had a shot. But it was still a long shot just because, I mean, there was a former police officer that was actually there at Santana at the shooting that, that oh, I was wow. a part of. He yeah, was one yeah, of the responding yeah. officers. I got to meet him. Humbert Cabrera, another great guy. He was El Cajon um, Citizen of the Year one year. Oh, my so, goodness. So, I mean, so there's some really upstanding individuals. So you must be some incredible person to have, <laughs> have beat, beat everybody out. I guess, Which, no, I don't know about it's that. just because you're really good looking. That's no. What <laughs> <laughs> so, and, they, and then uh, I, had, I had a relationship with a couple of council members. Yeah. Steve Goebel, the deputy mayor. Okay. He's a good, he's a really good guy. We did the El Cajon Community Cleanup Group together where we go around El Cajon we picked, just picked up trash. I think we picked up around five tons of trash. Wow. Um, in about a year. And that's just our small little group. Um, and he, him and I are just picking up trash on Saturday mornings with five or six other people. Um, so I think he saw my heart yeah. and desire. And, yeah. Um, he selected. They, they voted and nominated me. And, and you got it. And here I am as a city council. But you still have to fight for this in November. Yeah, big big seat um, coming up in in November 2020. So, like I said, we've already started. Yeah, been knocking on residents' doors, um, and I'm I'm in the position now learning what it's like to be a council member. So, yeah, I have the expertise as we speak. That's so, fantastic. So yeah. you're almost becoming, in a sense, an incumbent. So you have a yeah, a, 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 even though you weren't elected, but you've got all this experience here. So yeah, and it's fantastic. like drinking out of a fire hose. Yeah. And it's part time too. Yeah. So I, like I said before, I have a full time job, all the local, um, all local government officials, it's all part time for them. They, yeah, they either have to run their they have to run their families, they have to run a business, they have a full time job. Um, so it's, it's a, it's, it's a, a big sacrifice, heavy load. It is service. Yeah. It really is service. I mean, we don't get paid pretty much anything. So, yeah. 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 Which is what my heart is. And I think that's a good thing. It is being in, being in a position of a, attract volunteers. The heart of a volunteer is the strongest thing in America. Mm -hmm. And if you're not getting paid to do something, um, you're going to attract the right type of people who have the right motives. Absolutely. And so I was going to actually ask you about that very thing is, uh, so what is your heart for El Cajon and what is it? You know, you, you said that you felt God had a call on you to do this. Yeah. And so from a spiritual perspective and from a service-oriented perspective, um, what is it that you're hoping to achieve through serving on the council for the people of El Cajon and for the people of the city? Well, I mean, specifically, there's, there's a handful of things that I want to do. One of them, the most visible one's homelessness. I mean, that's, that's what I hear most. You know, homeless people are, are the homeless people. It's, it's, a, it's a problem in all of the I call it the left coast, the west coast. Yeah, it, it's a big. It's well, in a, California, it's unreal. In in L. A. in San Francisco, mm -hmm. the homelessness is out of control. Yeah, it really is. And so, um, what I think we need to do is we need to manage the homeless population. And what I want to bring is, we need to treat ho certain homeless people differently than others. Yeah, we don't treat the um, single mom living out of her car um, the same way we treat a uh, a homeless person who's. Uh, on drugs or has mental illness, mm -hmm. or just the vagrant that's robbing people, breaking into cars and garages. Yeah. So that's one thing. Um, the other one is uh, law enforcement. I mean, we got to we got to make sure we have police and fire. Yeah. And um, and the last one is financial responsibility of our, of our financial obligations. Mm. I mean, if anyone looks at the pension, which is super boring, but it's super important. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of costs paying for our pension. So. That's the specific spiritually, like you said, we're in a war uh, mm -hmm. for our culture, and you you you're an apologist for um, our faith. Yeah, 
um, we need people that are apologists for conservative values mm. in in the uh, political realm. Yeah, and a lot of the times people know what conservative values are, but they we don't know how to defend it. Yep, um, we don't know how to identify it. Um, so I, 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 you said off the air, we you did a, uh, a a show on democratic socialism, what it is. Yeah, that's important. Your listeners need to we need to know and and know why this is a destructive policy. Yeah, it's interesting because, you know, um, you're running against somebody or very possibly running. Not everybody, like you said, is, is declared, but you're potentially running against a fellow who has essentially come out and said very clearly, I am a democratic socialist. Yeah. I'm for single payer health care. Yeah. I'm for free education. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, immediately and, and I'm curious to hear your perspective on this. But for a lot of people, when they hear that, they go, Pfft. Sounds good to me. <laughs> hey, free everything. You know, right now our community colleges are giving away the first two years free. Yeah. And uh, I talked to my students about that and they're like, hey, you know, I don't know how they do it, but I'll take advantage of that. Yeah. Right. Um, and I think that makes that's interesting because it's kind of like, OK, how do you run against somebody who's saying I'm going to give you everything for free? Well, <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, yeah. before you answer, we're, we're coming up on a break here. But my guest today is Phil Ortiz. If you want to learn more about him. You can check out his Facebook page. It's facebook, facebook.com forward slash elect Phil Ortiz. And he's running for El Cajon City Council in November 2020. So you might be like, wow, this is a little early. But, you know, uh, we he, he's trying to get out in front here, get everything established. He actually had his kickoff campaign two months ago. So um, I think uh, this shows uh, a lot of diligence and uh, respect here. We, we should give him a lot of respect for that. And um, I encourage you to uh, vote for him. Uh, he has conservative values. If you value conservative values, uh, he 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 has a strong faith in God. And uh, so somebody that you should really consider voting for in the election coming up. And we're going to be talking about the different worldview perspectives here that are being brought to the table. Uh, the democratic socialist worldview versus... Um, the Democratic Republic worldview, which is two very different things. So when we come back, we'll continue that discussion. Stay with us. We'll be right back. I bring my need, I will bring my heart. Save money by taking good care of your car. Call Conover Tires, Wheels, and Service in Oceanside. Locally owned and operated since 1991 with all the brands you trust. See their great customer reviews and special offers at ConoverTires.com. Dan and his team are proud to support Educate for Life with Kevin Conover. They even sell affordable, reliable used cars and enclosed trailers. Conover Tires, 2405 Oceanside Boulevard, 760-439-1631. Educate for Life helps you build your life on the rock. LG Equipment helps builders build on good soil. Luke Gibson's team at LG Equipment is your local source for grading, demolition, hauling, and more. Learn about their bulk water services from trucks to tankers to towers at rentwatertower.com. Get your questions answered. Call LG Equipment at 619-988-0924. Learn more at lgequipment.com. 619-988-0924. Life insurance is like a parachute. If you don't have it when you need it, it's too late. When your family faces a challenge, you don't want to face liability because you're uninsured or underinsured. Decades of San Diegans have trusted Jim Kelly of Kelly Insurance Agency and Allstate to insure homes, cars, businesses, and lives, no matter where they live throughout California. Your family's needs are always changing. Call to schedule a checkup today. Call Jim Kelly and his team right now, 619-562-9199. Thanks for listening today. This is Kevin Conover. I'm your host on Educate for Life Radio. And we are uh, on KPraise 1210 AM here in San Diego, Southern California, as well as FM 106.1 in North County. Uh, We're also streaming all over the web. We're on uh, Facebook. Uh, We are also on YouTube, Periscope. And so all kinds of opportunities to check out what we're doing here. Um, I'm also a a Christian apologist. I teach, I've been doing this for 13 years, 
teaching uh, 12th grade students about apologetics, how to defend their faith in God. And uh, we're actually going through a unit uh, right now in school that is dealing with uh, God and government. Uh, how do we as Christians integrate our faith into what we believe? And how do you do this in a pluralistic culture? So you've got people with different religions, you've got all kinds of uh, different viewpoints on things. So uh, as a Christian, what does that mean for me? How do I live out my faith and integrate it with politics? And um, you know, how do I treat people fairly while at the same time saying Christianity is true uh, and other, other viewpoints are not? Um, that's very exclusive and, and some people are offended by that. We live in a culture where right now where the popular thing is, hey, don't offend anybody. And so uh, that's what we're talking about. You can check that out. It's in my 400 series online. Um, I have a whole video curriculum that helps you to understand that better. And I was talking with Phil off the air just a little while ago. I actually have a program that I did on democratic socialism because it's such a weird thing to say democratic socialism. Uh, is there such thing as democratic communism? Uh, it's just weird. Uh, and, and so what you can listen to that, but I wanted to get your take, Phil, um, you know, as you're moving into the, the city council and so forth, and you're looking at these things, what is your view on, you know, the back and forth right now? One of your opponents is offering all this, this free stuff. How do you respond to that when you're t t telling people, Hey, I'll vote for me, but I'm not going to give you fee free college. Yeah. Well, before I jump into that, I want to, first address, you know, as Christians, we go to church and we, our model is Jesus and he's perfect. And the Bible, it's, it, the, the word of God is perfect. And then, and, and it's easy and we can jump in there. And then we go to politics and it's not perfect. Yeah. It's messy and it's, it's scary. And there's, and so we, we, we shy away from engaging and, because it's easier to, to just uh, be involved in church. Mm. But just like any ministry, we have a youth venture ministry at Foothills. Uh, where uh, where we ministered it to uh, youth that are uh, in in depressed areas, and that's messy, and that can be a little scary, and so we need to. And so all that to say, we need to engage. But um, so democratic socialism. The first thing I I, I want to make a comment about it is I think most people who are saying yeah free stuff free stuff I think they're uninformed about the consequences and the actual results that they're going to produce. Mm. Um, and the people that are producing, or that are promoting it, I think they're just willfully ignorant. They, they kind of know that it might, uh, that, it, that it sounds good. Um, and, you know, most people that, that want to vote for it, I'm sure they just want to help people out. Yeah. They might have altruistic motives, um, but the result is what you have to look at. And the consequences and the unintended consequences of those policies, um, are are destructive. I mean, you look at places like North Korea and Cuba, where the government controls the means of production, which means they control businesses. Yeah, which means they business business owners can't make decisions. Um, the collective, the group, is more important than the individual, which is the exact opposite of what um, the founders who prayed and sought God mm -hmm. to figure out what is the best government to honor God. Um, that is the exact opposite. We say the individual is important. That you should not trample on our rights. Um, yes, we have a democratic society, but there are limits to that. There's limits to those, and that stops at the individual at their rights. Yeah. I mean, that's why we believe in um, we, we, we're against abortion. That's an infringement upon the that baby in the womb's individual rights. That's why we believe in property rights as as conservatives. Yeah. So um, it tr communism, socialism, they're close cousins they trample on the rights of the individual for for the benefit of the, the society um yeah i mean fundamentally what you're looking at here is when you the more free stuff you give away the more you have to take money out of the pockets of the people that are working for it exactly yeah. and i mean even the even the bible in proverbs it says if you don't work you don't eat yeah uh, so and people that try and twist I, I hear this argument a lot people try and twist the bible and say jesus was socialist i've mm. heard that yes i've heard that but yeah. it's absolutely crazy because jesus gave us two models to be charit charitable um or the bible gives us two one was the individual making a personal choice to go and um feed the hungry yeah and clothe the naked um the second model that was given to us is through the church is for us to be is for us to be um charitable through the church in acts uh the disciples came together 
voluntarily, I'm using these words because this is an exact opposite of what socialism yep, is, where yep, you're forced yep. to be charitable. Yeah. Um, so uh, th that's the biggest. It ceases to be charity, and it ceases to be um, living out our calling as Christians if we're forced to do it. Mm. It's coercion. It's not charity, and you're not fulfilling the gospel of, of Jesus by taking care of people if you're having someone else do it. Plus, you miss out on the best part of of helping your fellow man and and loving people. You miss that face-to-face -face connection that God calls us to. That's right. If you're just throwing money to the government, what it does is it disconnects the person that's supposed to be helping mm -hmm. the individual. Mm -hmm. And that's so important. It's the relationship. It's not just the money. It's not just the material gain. Yeah. It's the actual relationships that are cultivated mm -hmm. through one person helping another individual. Yeah. And, the, and when you make the government the middleman in that process, you've essentially eliminated that. Yeah. And there's so many things wrong with it. It also takes away the drive to work hard because you're having so much money taken from you, mm -hmm. right? That you don't get to you don't get the the, the fruit of your labors. Yeah. Yeah, the, think of it this way, right now in California, if you combine all the taxes we pay, I mean, it's around 30 or 40%. So 30 for 30 40% of your pay is going to the government, which means from September to December, you're no longer working for yourself. Yep. You're working just for the government. Every yeah. day you wake up early, you go to bed, you miss out on hanging out with your kids, your family, you're going to work for the government. Yep. And it's up to the government to spend that money responsibly to have some respect for it. Ugh. And so that's one of the biggest reasons why I'm in here. Yeah, and, and then one of the problems with government spending your money is that because the money wasn't earned, there's no appreciation for how it's spent. Yes. It's like it's like if I give my son um, you know, 20 bucks, versus if he earns 20 bucks. If mm -hmm. I give him 20 bucks, he, he just flitter, fritters it away. He's like, mm -hmm. well, whatever, right? Yeah. But if he had to work hard to make that money, then he's much more responsible for it. And the same applies with get, the, the government getting money. There's so many problems with socialism, it's unbelievable, but on, its, on that immediate gratification, hey, you get a free education, mm -hmm. right? But do we wanna give everybody free education or do we want to be able to spend more time with our families and not have to work so hard? Right. Uh, which which is uh, critically important. And along with those same facts, I mean, we could talk about the cost of education uh, and and these things that are happening too. But but uh, that's uh, for another story. But uh, so so uh, my guest today is Phil Ortiz. He's running for El Cajon City Council. And uh, so Phil, some of the other people that are running for you, you know, they're advocating this socialism and everything and all. Do you think that they have a chance? I mean, what is your viewpoint on? where things are going? Um, I, well, in the immediate, yeah, some of these people, obviously, like you said, it sounds great on the surface. You yeah. Know? Um, but that's one of the reasons why I'm getting out so I can have these conversations. And my philosophy um, with regard to government is is this. If, and this is coming from a former city manager of the city of El Cajon, he told me this. I don't want to take credit for it. He said, um, local government is the most important form of government. If the federal government were to shut down, you probably wouldn't notice for maybe six months, unless you work directly for the federal government. Yeah. If the state government were to shut down, you probably wouldn't notice for a year, if ever. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. But if the local government were to shut down, you'd know within a matter of minutes. Mm. That's police. That's your fire. That's, so that's 911. That's your trash service. That's your water service. That's flushing your toilet. That is the most important form of government that we have. Oh, that's great insight. And that's where our hearts and our efforts should be with your neighbor on your street. Forget about what's going on in the in the loony state. Forget about what's going on in the circus in Washington. What's going on with your neighbor? What's yeah. these laws that are being passed in your backyard? I mean, we have kids that, you know, don't have parents that, you know, there's drug addiction and there's homeless. Like, go get involved in your local community. Mm. Um, have that face-to-face -face relationship we were talking about before. That's really cool. So if I, people ask me, oh, you know, you're so young, you can go to this position in that position and position yourself for the, and honestly i don't want to divert any more control or power to the state or federal i want to focus that all of our efforts into our local community um and you can get a lot done yeah in your local community i mean that's where churches are, have their biggest effect so yeah so i want to talk about that too we're, we're coming up on a break here but when we come back we have one more segment left and i want to talk about practically speaking um when you, you you've been on the council now for a little while and you've got a lot more to go till till November. And I'm just curious for our listeners to know what kind of practical things are you guys deciding on a regular basis? What kind of things are you having to wrestle with and, and to figure out? I know some of it, you, we've already talked about homelessness and so forth, but what other things are critical um, and could you use support and encouragement with? 
and uh, how also people can get involved in your campaign. So when we come back, we're going to finish up with Phil Ortiz uh, running for El Cajon City Council in November 2020. And uh, we're just getting ahead of the curve here. So stay with us. We'll be right back. Gibson of LG Equipment supports Educate for Life with Kevin Conover. Luke grew up in the construction industry and now serves LG's commercial and residential customers throughout Southern California. Whether you need grading, paving, hauling, demolition, on-site bulk water service, water trucks, tankers, and towers, call LG Equipment at 619-998-0924. Learn more at lgequipment.com. 619-998-0924. Hi, this is Jason Hall, president of Team Home Loans, a branch of Synergy One Lending. I just want to take this opportunity to thank Kevin Conover for the profound impact he's had on mine and my wife's spiritual life, as well as being an incredible teacher while our kids were his students. His knowledge and passion have taught us all how important it is to be defenders of our faith. It is our sincere hope and prayer that you will continue to learn to be defenders of your faith through Kevin's radio show and through his Educate for Life teachings. Thank you, Kevin, from the Hall family and Team Home Loans. Life insurance is like a parachute. If you don't have it when you need it, it's too late. When your family faces a challenge, you don't want to face liability because you're uninsured or underinsured. Decades of San Diegans have trusted Jim Kelly of Kelly Insurance Agency and Allstate to insure homes, cars, businesses, and lives, no matter where they live throughout California. Your family's needs are always changing. Call to schedule a checkup today. Call Jim Kelly and his team right now. 619-562-9199. Welcome back to Educate for Life. I'm your host, Kevin Conover. My website's educateforlife.org. You can check out all kinds of resources on there if you're interested in uh, establishing a firm foundation in your faith. We go through everything you can imagine that has to do with biblical questions. How do I know God exists? Who wrote the Bible? How do I know that the right books are in the Bible? How do I know, how do I know the Bible is actually from God? Uh, is the Bible real history? We have all these kinds of questions that we answer. We also deal with cultural issues. So we have things up there that have to do with a lot of the issues that we're dealing with in our culture today and that people are wrestling with and trying to figure out and how should I feel about this and what does God think about that? So check it out. It's on my website, educateforlife.org. All kinds of uh, helpful answers there for you. My guest today is Phil Ortiz. We're talking about government and politics. Uh, you know, one of my favorite verses, uh, Psalm 33, 12 says, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. And another uh, scripture that I really like, Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. And, you know, the scriptures are really clear that if we put God first in our, in our lives and in our culture, in our uh, communities, that that culture will experience blessings. They will experience emotional blessings. You'll see families hold together. You'll see uh, fathers be better fathers. You'll see less drug abuse. You'll see less uh, substance abuse. You'll see kids staying in school. You'll see uh, less teen pregnancy. So, uh, in fact, all of these different social problems can be tied back to not following God's plan and design for our lives. And so I really want to encourage you that as we're coming up in 2020, it's a huge election year, that um, when you're considering who you're going to vote for, ask yourself, where do they base their values? Where do their values come from? What's the foundation upon which they, they establish their opinions and their, their feelings about life, right? Uh, because these things translate into people's perspectives on things like immigration, on things like uh, um, taxes, all of these issues are very relevant to a biblical worldview. And uh, Phil, uh, something I was going to throw in when we were talking about, uh, uh, you know, is the Bible advocate socialism? You know, obviously it doesn't. Christ didn't advocate socialism. Um, in the Old Testament, it's really interesting that the laws never tell people that they have to contribute to a community fund that then goes towards, you know, the poor or whatever it is. What's interesting is that there's an individual mandate given uh, by God to the people of Israel that tells them you must 
help the poor as an individual help the poor if you love God. And uh, it's basically saying, look it, you can't love God without loving your neighbor. But it's not, like you said, it's not coerced, it's voluntary. Uh, and uh, I find that so interesting um, that that's the way it is. Yeah, um, if we shouldn't, no one should seek to advance the kingdom of God through government. Mm. Jesus didn't go to the Roman government and try and pass laws to be charitable and things yeah, like that. Yeah. So we shouldn't be doing that either. We That's the individual uh, mandate that we're talking about. Um, so yeah, people that twist, the, they have to, you have to do origami with the Bible. Yeah, <laughs> in to say to, that it advocates socialism or something exactly. like that, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so currently who's on the city council in El Cajon? So uh, Bill Wells, mayor. Um, yeah, city of El Cajon. Then we have the deputy mayor, uh, Steve Goble, uh, Gary Kendrick. He just actually won his uh, first, the first district election in El Cajon. Um, and then Bob McClellan, uh, who's been on the city council, I think, longer than I've been alive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love I you, Bob. Sorry. <laughs> um, but uh, he's going to be sunsetting, and he's not going to run for re-election. Uh, uh, okay. So how many different um, seats are up for election in 2020? There are three seats. So Steve Goebel and Bob McClellan live in the same district. Like I said, Bob's not running anymore, so Steve's going to run in the Granite Hills area. Yeah. Uh, then I'm going to be running in Southern El Cajon. Um, and then there's another seat, the third one, uh, in Northern El Cajon. Okay. So three seats in 2020. Okay. And uh, so are all of those, do we, do we currently have conservatives running in each of those seats? Or? Yeah. 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 So um, right now there's five conservatives on the El Cajon City Council and we've been fortunate in El Cajon to have the majority uh, council uh, be conservative Christians in El Cajon for a long time. Which is really strange for California. Yes. Yeah. And, so. and to be completely blunt, San Diego is really the last foothold for conservatives in the entire state of California. Um, we're, and East County is the strongest yeah, foothold for Orange San County Diego. lost everything exactly, and so uh, so if you're going to get involved, you need to get involved now. There's no waiting. Like, yeah, the, the, our backs are up against the wall. Yeah, um, so th I'm running in my district as a conservative, uh, conservative Christian. Um, uh, Steve Goble is running in uh, the Granite Hills area, and there may be someone. There's rumors. It's still so early. It's yeah. hard to tell. But yeah, um, so all that to say, this new district election. It, there could be a couple seats lost to if Democrats, people aren't involved. If people aren't involved, yeah. Exactly. So if you're listening, this is super important because uh, you know California just keeps going farther and farther left. It's it's unreal. I don't know how far they can go uh, with with everything that's happening. But um, even if you're in another state and you're <laughs> you're concerned, maybe you're from San Diego and you wanna you wanna uh, help us out. You know, um, please invest some of your time, energy, and prayers, uh, finances into helping get, um, you know, Christian conservatives elected in East County and specifically, um, you know, El Cajon. Phil Ortiz, you can check him out at facebook.com forward slash elect Phil Ortiz. He'll have another website up soon too, electphilortiz.com. And so um, what are you guys wrestling with currently on the city council? Uh, I know you said homelessness is, is part of what you're dealing with. What, what other practical issues do you have to deal with that um, decisions you're making on the city council? Yeah, I mean, the list is long and distinguished. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, How but, often do you guys meet? Well, we meet uh, every other week. So okay. about twice a month. Um, and sometimes it's two meetings uh, that day on Tuesdays. Um, I think the first thing that I've learned is, the, is what's best is um, you have to be a listening ear to the residents. Mm. My mom told me you got two ears and one mouth for a reason. Yeah, you listen twice as much as you speak. Yeah, and so you got to listen. I mean, and maybe a month in, I had a, a email from a resident, met him, talked about a traffic issue. A car ran into his uh, house, into his fence. Wow! And it was a it was a really small fix. So it's these little practical things. Yeah. that aren't really um, uh, divisive. But you just have to have a servant's heart and, and, and to go and, and represent the community well. Mm. Um, so you need to listen to the community. Um, the second one is a lot of it's just standing in the gap and not having bad policies come in. We, we're in a good position. Uh, the city's in a good position right now. Having conservatives run the finances. Mm. We have a surplus right now. 
which is going to come into handy if a recession comes. Yeah. And we and we can't pay our if we can't pay our bills, that means I one one's not coming like we said before, trash yeah. and fire everything. So we need to make sure that we manage our funding well. Um, a lot of it, like I said, is um, keeping bad policies out. I like that what you said because. Yeah. That's a lot of a lot of bureaucrats. What they're doing is they're looking for something to do, mm -hmm. and so they're trying. Uh, it seems like in California, they're always trying to find a way to uh, you know hold our hand. It's like yes. uh, they're constantly looking for ways to go. Hey, you can't do life on your own. Here, we'll help you. We'll fix whatever you know is going on. And so with that, the philosophy is the government shouldn't do what the individual or the public can't do on their own. Mm. And so whenever a proposal is sent or I get an email or something, you got to put it through that filter. Is this the government's role? Yeah. Probably not, especially the local government. Um, the local government has a handful of responsibilities um, to, to accomplish. And, 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 and that's really it. And yeah. So standing in the gap of that, the biggest one I'd like to see practically, if I could just say real quick, is our downtown area. We just had a concert venue come in, um, which is an anchor and it's it's a it's a kind of a sleepy downtown area um we'd like to revitalize that yeah we uh, the the best way to combat um this is something you learn in public administration 101 is the best way to combat theft is to increase pedestrians in walkways and it prevents p homeless encamp encampments passively you're not aggressively going out and with the stick of the government and whipping people yeah. it's passively you, you patronize areas you get people coming into the city going to restaurants going to shops and things like that and yeah. so that's something that i'd like to see done on a practical pu public administration standpoint is that's what great. can we do to attract business into El Cajon? absolutely yeah. i was going to ask you one last question before we're off the air here but um you know uh, el cajon has an incredibly diverse population i mean you have a lot of uh refugees coming from uh the middle east mm -hmm. You have uh, a diverse Chaldean population. You have um, uh, you have a lot of uh, Latinos uh, mm -hmm. in the twenty five percent. Twenty five percent. So, 25%. so yeah. um, how do you how do you reach the message? How do you reach out to these communities with a message of conservative values and and demonstrate that um, as a city council and as a just for, on a practical basis? What how do we do that? Yeah. So we have. I think the best position that I'm in is to be a mouthpiece for all the incredible organizations we have based in El Cajon, mm. helping each of these uh, groups. Uh, refugee, the Iraqi Community Center, um, Refugee Center, uh, we have Latino, there's, so, there's homeless advocate groups, ECTLC is a huge one. Mm -hmm. So um, it's my job as a leader in the community to promote these groups that can advocate for their individual situations yeah. um, the best way possible. If the government, like we said, were to take that on, we're gonna mess it up. Oh yeah. We're gonna use it inefficiently. Yeah. Um, so and outside of that, it's just knocking on doors. Yeah. It's going to these events. Um, we have Haunt Fest tonight. It's the largest uh free um, Halloween uh, event in the county. Wow. And immigrants love it because they don't have any uh, idea what what Halloween is. And yeah. They just love that. So going out there and talking to people and chicken and what are your issues? And, and like I said, it's an ear. It's being yeah, there and yeah. being engaged and involved. Connecting with people. Exactly. That's awesome. On a one-on-one -on -one individual basis. Exactly. That's yeah. fantastic. So. Phil, thanks so much for being on the program today, man. Thanks for all you do, Kevin. Really appreciate yeah. it. So if you're listening out there, Phil Ortiz, facebook.com forward slash elect Phil Ortiz. Um, I really think, um, you know, if you vote for him, you voted for a winner. And uh, somebody who has a really a real heart for people, and uh, really cares, and uh, really wants to make a difference for good, uh, loves God and loves people. So, uh, thanks for listening today. I hope you enjoyed the program, and and we'll be back next week. We have a couple of pretty cool interviews coming up. Jay Warner Wallace, the author of Cold Case Christianity, is going to be on the program with a new book he just wrote with Sean McDowell, and uh, we have a few other amazing guests that are going to be on the program. So. Look forward to being with you next week. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. God bless you. Did you miss part of today's program? Don't worry, we're committed to helping you get the info you need. Okay, that was dumb. But for real, visit educateforlife.com for podcasts and video recordings of the show and to sign up for the School of Unshakable Faith. Leave us your comments, compliments, questions, or concerns at 800-243-9719.